hey students hope you all are doing great and uh, we want to thank you for the overwhelming response that we've received from the previous videos today we are going to take up the topic that is analysis of financial statements from the subject accounts this chapter is going to help us understand various various topics that is what exactly do we mean by a financial statement what are its characteristics understanding its nature and contents how a balance sheet is prepared what are its uses and also something about an operating cycle of a business let us first start understanding with what is a financial statement financial statements are reports similar to that of your reports that is your academic report so when you go for an open house and the teacher highlights that a student is weak in a particular subject how is she able to do that she is simply making an analysis of the marks that you have gained or a particular student have gained from the respective subject and the subject which has lowest number of marks is the weak subject for that particular student and the subject which has the highest number of marks denotes that the child is very good and apt with that particular subject similar things happen in accounts so since a company or a firm has different department and it has different type of transactions so in order to understand which kind of a transaction is favorable unfavorable or in order to understand which department is performing poor or which department is performing better than the previous year or in order to make comparison between two companies we need some kind of a report and that report in technical terms in the accounting system is called as financial statements so financial statement consists of various documents and going through those documents helps us to understand the performance of the company over a given period of time these statements are prepared every year depending upon the standards and the various accounting concepts that we have already studied in class 11th now financial statement is a compilation of four major documents when put together are termed to be as financial statement and which further helps us to understand or interpret the financial performance for that particular year or a given period of time so here there are four documents as we can see one is the balance sheet second is profit and loss statement third is note to accounts and the fourth is cash flow statements now what is a balance sheet balance sheet is a representation of the assets and liabilities of the company or a firm in a period of one year it represents the total assets that the company has built up and the total liabilities that the company is entitled to pay over a period of time balance sheet uh, can be created in two formats its vertical format and the horizontal format moving on ahead there is profit and loss statement profit and loss statement is a representation of the total expenses and incomes of the firm for a year and while calculating all the expenses and incomes at the end we come to know whether the company has earned profit that is if the income is over the expenses it's a profit and whether the company is earning a loss that is expenses are more than that of the income so through this profit and loss statement we can make a deep analysis of all the transactions also come to know which expenses are heavier as compared to that of income in that given period of year and can later the company can decide to reduce that depending upon their decisions is note to accounts note to accounts are a short representation of the various ingredients mentioned in the balance sheet for example there is one ingredient in the balance sheet that is your capital now capital changes every year depending upon the additional capital brought into the business or the amount drawn by the partners or addition or subtraction of the profit and the loss respectively so understanding why the capital has changed we need to prepare a short note in the form of a document and that is called as note to accounts so this helps us understand the various components that have changed in the balance sheet because it's not possible for 
us to put every minute detail in the balance sheet and the next is cash flow statement cash flow statement represents the total cash the company has earned or the total cash the company has paid out in the form of payments in a given period of time understanding the various transactions that are generating cash or the transaction that require the payment of cash in an amount total representation of the movement of cash within or outside the company for that particular year and compilation of all these documents together are called as financial statements let us now look forward to the characteristics of financial statement first it says historical documents so financial statements are based on the historical documents that is whenever you see a financial statement it consists of various assets and liabilities that have not been generated immediately in the present or in the current financial year it has been generated somewhere around 5 6 or say 10 years ago so in that case also the value of the asset or the liability reflected will be the same as that reflected 10 years ago because we consider that unless and until the assets are sold off or the liabilities is written off the value of the asset and liability respectively should be mentioned at their original value that is the value at the time of purchasing the assets or the value at the of taking up the liability next is monetary terms whatever it be any kind of transaction everything in the financial statement is expressed in the terms money that is it only represents quantitative values not qualitative values so here there may be many things that is happening in the company which is unethical or some problems which are happening in the company in, within the management or with the customers but still if the financial performance of the company in terms of profit is high all those qualitative problems will not be highlighted in the statement because it only deals with the quantitative factors so here there may be two case like let us take company a and company b company a has unhealthy relations with the employees and company b has healthy relation with the employees but the profit the company has been earning that is company a has been earning is higher than that of b so when we compare the financial performance we tend to conclude that company a is better in performance at company b but when we see the qualitative factor company b is better than company a so this is one of the major drawback of the financial statement also that it reflects only the monetary value but yes at the end of the day a company's growth is mainly calculated by the revenue it is generating or where it stands in the monetary term so that financial statement helps us understand next it shows financial performance as you already discussed the profit or the loss or the value of each transaction helps us understand the performance of the company so like in the previous year if the company was earning a loss and if this year the company is earning a profit it means that the company has performed better than the previous year similarly the sales in the company in the previous year was increased by 50% this year it has fallen by 10% that is become only 40% so here it understand that the company is not performing well with the sales so through the financial report or the financial statement the company can in the upcoming year focus more on their sales by increasing better strategies or employing new people so it helps understanding financial performance or show financial performance next is determine financial position a company undergoes millions of transaction in a financial year and it is not possible to write out all the transactions in one document and even if we write it it won't be easy for any of the customer or any of the shareholder or any interested stakeholder in the company to interpret it so a summary of all the transactions in an abridged form helps us understand the position of the company and that is the reason we say that the financial statement helps us determine the financial position that is what is the capital at the end of the year after all the drawings or additional capital that is taken place and what are the assets including some sold or 
some new added to the business or the company the liability is written off or the new liability is taken up so it's like a summary and one does not need to go through each and every transaction to understand the position a simple look at the financial statement will easily help the stakeholder to understand the financial position of the company in a financial year now taking a look at the nature of financial statements first is recorded facts financial statements are recorded on the basis of the facts that is a transaction cannot be recorded directly you need some evidence or some underlying document that supports or that corroborates with the happening of the transaction so everything that is written or mentioned in the financial statement is to be backed by some recorded evidence or a document next is accounting conventions conventions are basically set of beliefs or the opinions in the field of accounts are called as accounting convention so here it's a practice that has been followed by the people in the field uh it could be say for example conservatism which states that we should always make a mention or a provision for expenses or the losses the company is in a chance to incur whereas the profits and the incomes should be ignored so these are kind of conventions that we have been following over a longer period of time and are reflected in the financial statement next is accounting concept for example say going concern concept under this we assume that the company is going to go forever and that is the reason every element or every transaction in the financial statement is recorded at its historical value and not current market value next is source of financial information as already discussed in order to understand the financial performance or a position we can directly have a look over the financial statement next is selection of accounting standards uh the institution of chartered accountancy of india from time to time gives the standards at which the accounting statements need to be prepared and any kind of deviation from them may not make us prepare a correct a true or an accurate financial statement therefore it is very essential for the accountant or the company to ensure that the financial statements are performed well enough in consistency with the accounting standards maintained or mentioned now let us see the contents of the balance sheet okay balance sheet we've already discussed now as i told you that it represents two main topics under it that is assets and the other is equity and liabilities so equity and liabilities represent what exactly a company owes that is to its shareholders or to its creditors and here in the assets it shows what actually a company owns so here in equity and liabilities we further see shareholders funds so shareholders funds are the total capital that the shareholders have invested into the business and it's the responsibility and the obligation of the company to repay them that is the reason it is included in the liability and the other is current and non current liabilities these are the liabilities that the company has generated from the outsiders that is current liabilities are the ones that the company has to repay within a period of one year it could be trade payables or civil payables overdraft etc and non current liabilities are the obligations on the company for a period more than one year that is it needs to be paid for say two years three years four years or any indefinite period of time those are considered to be non current liabilities it could be like long term loan taken from the bank on the other hand there are assets which are classified as current assets non current assets and investments so current assets are the assets that are to be turned up in the form of cash with the company within a period of one year like that of bills receivable or trade receivable which can be converted in liquid or cash within a period of one year next is non current assets which cannot be converted in the form of cash or liquid for a longer period of time that is it can be converted only when the company is willing to sell and these are the assets which cannot be traded easily like land you cannot sell them every day so it has to be kept with you for a longer period of time 
and then third is investments so investments are kind of securities in which the company has put its money it includes both current and non current that is it could be short term investments also and it could be long term investments also depending upon the choice and the decision of the company now let us have a look at a sample balance sheet here you see the balance sheet is classified into two categories one is the liabilities and the shareholders equity and the next is the assets so if you see their share capital reserves and surplus that is the total the company owes to the shareholders and therefore they are termed to be a shareholders equity next is short term loans trade payables and dividends these are all current liabilities and as such in this sample there is no long term liabilities mentioned so we have not stated it here next you can see is debtors loans and advances cash and bank these are all current assets and there are non current assets which are also fixed assets and then is long term investments which gives us total of assets so here we can see that the balance sheet is classified into two now further understand running shareholders funds we have classified into three parts now a company cannot raise funds to an infinite value there is a limit placed on every company that is the total amount they can raise in the form of capital in the form from the shareholders in the form of shares and debentures and that is called as authorized capital and not a single penny can be raised beyond that of authorized capital authorized capital includes issued capital and subscribed capital that is it is not necessary for the company to utilize its potential of raising capital at once it can use it in parts or it can use half the amount now and some part in later in the future so the amount of capital that the company is willing to raise in that particular point of time is called as issued capital that is the number of shares it issuing at that point of time next is subscribed capital subscribed capital if i as the company issue 10000 shares in the market but it is not necessary that exactly 10000 shares are only going to be subscribed to there could be over subscription that is more than 10000 people may apply for and there may be a condition where not 10000 but less than 10000 people apply so in this case the actual capital of the money that i receive may not be equivalent to the 10000 shares so the capital received becomes a subscribed capital and when the money received with respect to the subscription of the shares it is called as paid up capital so i have issued 10000 shares and i need to receive 5 rupees per share that is i need to get 50000 rupees from the issuing of the shares then and i receive all of the amount then it becomes paid up capital but out of that if i only receive 30000 and 20000 are still pending then that 30000 will make my capital as not fully paid up capital that is still 20000 is pending but if all 50000 is raised and received then it becomes fully paid up capital that is no more money is to be received from the issuing of those particular shares and next is share capital so sometimes it may happen that uh, despite of warnings or despite of lot of notification people may fail to pay the money due on the respective shares and in that case those kind of shareholders are put into another account that is called as call in arrears that is the amount which we have been pending to receive from those shareholders and the next total paid up capital that is the amount we have already received so far so together this represents the current share capital of the company at that particular financial year so i hope it is clear and i'm moving forward to the next topic that is operating cycle so operating cycle represents the working of a company in a financial year which is considered to be 12 months but an operating cycle is assumed to work for 12 to 13 months because of the various steps involved first is cash and bank now here if a company is starting fresh then it is a cash and capital that it is introducing but if it is an ongoing concern then it could be a cash or capital that it has received from the previous year so it start with cash and bank the money which we use to purchase raw materials okay 
and this process goes for around a period of 3 months making all the things in arrangement planning for the labor capital utilizing all the resources may take around a period of 3 months then using these raw materials to process and manufacture our good or a service in which the company is dealing now this all of this may take a period of for around 4 months next step involves finished goods held in inventory now here the goods that we have prepared or manufactured may not be sold within a short span it takes long period of time to sell out the products in the market depending upon the demand so here we assume that this step may involve a period of 2 months next is finished goods sold on credit now all the goods are not always sold on cash as we know a company deals on accrual basis that is both cash and credit basis so there may be goods sold on credit so in this case we engage into tra- uh, trade receivables or bills receivable so here money is received after say one month two month three months or four month depending upon the mutual agreement of the company and the ones to it is being sold that is a creditor so after 4 months finally the trade receivables are realized approximately and this generating money or cash and through bank and then again the cycle goes on so this operating cycle is a continuous process that happens into a company or in a business and the assumed time period is 12 to 13 months so i hope you enjoyed the video you enjoyed the topics that we covered and for any query you can mention them in the comment section we are going to come up with new videos soon and uh, do like share and subscribe also let us know the topics or the subjects you want us to make videos on and thank you and enjoy